What's going on my broskies, my name is Toadski, back again, here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video, and in today's video, we're going to be doing the playthrough of Treasure Map Edward Weevil. So I've been streaming earlier today, I streamed for about three hours, and uh, I farmed a lot, honestly, you can see that uh, I'm already past the 7 million threshold for the point reward, so no problems there, I've already done my red tickets, and you guys will obviously be seeing those at the end of the Treasure Map, once we get all of our rewards, and you'll see all the pulls in total for that video, so definitely stay tuned for that. That. But uh, in this video, we're going to be doing just a regular playthrough using the teams that I did use on stream. So if you did catch the stream, you guys would know the teams that I am using. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. You can see that I am on navigation level 13. But I guess before we jump into it, I also want to talk about this specifically. Uh, you can see that the Doflamingo Super Evolution Skull is now available in the Treasure Map Shop. So you can spend 2,000 tickets for one skull. You do need five of them. So 10,000 tickets total if you did miss the skull's last map or the map before, whenever it came out. You can go ahead and buy these skulls here and all the way down the bottom the Cavendish skulls are also still there If you want to go ahead and purchase them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it So as I said, I'm on navigation level 13 and the really cool thing about this treasure map is that on JP there was no intrusion battle. However, on Global, they have updated it so that there is an intrusion battle this time around. The thing is, is that with these uh, Global exclusive intrusion battles, we don't actually have any information as to what the boss does. Uh, luckily though, they have made these intrusion battles very, very easy. So you can see Trafalgar Law is actually the intrusion battle this time around. Uh, last treasure map when we had Doflamingo, it was Senor Pink. So it's nice that they are keeping the theme with these intrusion battle bosses. Um, and the other mid-map bosses are Buggy, Boa, Kuma, and Mihawk, and we'll be going through them as well. Um, but uh, we'll see how this specific run goes. Now, this specific run, I think, yeah, we're going to go target Buggy. There's no reason not to here. So hopefully we get a three. Okay, we just missed the rainbow chest, which would have been amazing to go ahead and get a hold of. Now, because we haven't killed Law yet, we actually don't have a stat boost. But remember, we actually still do have um, the... the the, the point boost, which is the most important part. So for against Buggy, I am utilizing a 6 plus big mom team, which uh, the, the main reason why you would want to run this team, as I explained in my other previous two videos about the treasure map with the treasure map preparation and my team's video, is because uh, Buggy actually has a shield he has a barrier that you have to break through and big mom is quite good because when she enrages and she attacks uh, her attacks actually bypass defensive effects which is uh very very useful so we'll go ahead and skip ahead and i'll see you guys at the boss stage Okay, so now we've made it to stage 7, which is the final boss stage. As I said, Buggy does have a barrier, and it's really annoying barrier. It's a 5-hit perfect barrier. So I'm using Big Mom here to KO the uh, the Buggy, but remember, you can use a lot of other different strategies. You could literally hit your 5 perfects and attack. You could bring barrier penetration, which is probably the most ideal way as well. Um, but either of those strategies are very good, because Buggy doesn't have that much HP. Like in Navigation Level 1, he only has 100 thousand HP and on the mid map he's even easier to defeat so either way uh, buggy is by far the easiest of these bosses in this specific treasure map um, but anyways uh, now that we've done that a law will come and approach us and then we'll go ahead and compete in the intrusion battle so this is the global exclusive fight that was not on Japan now the team that I am using for it is this team here which is a, a very very pay to win team utilizing a lot of the characters that I did pull in the recent Sugo Fest with the two limited rare recruit Marcos we got Kizaru and Ao there as well and then the final two characters I've got V2 Zoro because because he's a 1.5 times point booster and why wouldn't I run a higher point booster on the team and we're running another 1.35 point booster which is the Psy rare recruit pudding that was available during the black blade training sugo fest and there is a main reason why we are actually bringing this character so obviously at the start of the run your characters get reduced cooldowns uh, it doesn't specifically say which characters get reduced cooldowns so I assume it's all characters get their cooldowns reduced um, but for myself personally I'm just gonna go ahead and use Zora special to just wave clear this entire first stage uh, and then we'll move on to stage two which again is nothing special it's just a bunch of mob characters so we can actually go ahead and use the Marco special here and that will go ahead and deal some uh, decent damage to one of the mobs and it gives us a type boost and for three turns after you use his special you get a buffed captain ability uh, which is quite nice allowing us to get a buffed captain ability for this stage and the following stage as well so we're going to go ahead and do that and move on to the final stage against law now law is so easy like He's not difficult in any way, shape, or form. Very, very easy to beat. So you can see Law is quick. 
preemptive attack will bind your captains only for two turns. This is apparently only a two turn bind. He will give himself one turn of rainbow shield percent damage reduction and 98 turns of immunity. And that's it. Uh, after the second turn, he will um, swap your captain with one of your subs. And apparently below 20%, he paralyzes and do does some other crazy things. But he really doesn't have that much HP. But we can go ahead and use the Sakura Pudding here, which will go ahead and remove his rainbow shield that he has. Uh, and then also we can just use the other marker special ability to give us... Um, matching orbs as well as giving us another type boost and you can see after using marker special which only does 50 times his attack like that's a that's a decent chunk of hp gone and you can see like he really doesn't have that much hp and i'm in navigation level 13 on new world so you can see that it's a very very easy intrusion it's just a very good way for players out there who potentially don't farm treasure map as much as others allows you to get to that million point threshold much much quicker which is which is awesome and it also gives you more opportunities to drop large potions which is great for limit breaking because i know that limit breaking is a kind of tedious for many players out there so it's nice to just get easy materials like that and it also gives you a crap ton of points so let's go ahead and move on to the next boss which it looks like yes it's going to be boa hancock so i'll see you guys at boa all right, so now we've encountered Boa Hancock. Uh, she's definitely the most difficult out of all of these bosses in this specific treasure map. She is very, very tedious to deal with. She has lots of really annoying debuffs that you have to get around with her preemptive attack. Do I have any V2 Mihawks up? I do have one, which is great. Uh, this is the team that I am using here. Uh, this one's a little bit easier to build than the Marco team. I'm utilizing uh, Big Mom as the captain and uh, also, having Hyozo Rare Recruit as the sub is pretty important as uh, Boa has the effect where she can special bind your captains as well as your subs. Uh, it's three random characters that will get special binded. So the fact that we have Hyozo to unbind our characters is very, very good. But we're going to go ahead and skip a little bit further ahead into this boss fight because there is something that we have to talk about on stage six. All right, so we just beat stage five and moving on to stage six. This is the, the stage that we have to talk about. There's a bunch of these mobs that have barriers. At least they're all perfect hit barriers, which is pretty easy to deal with. Uh, I'm using Colosseum Brook special ability here to deal fixed damage through that barrier to just KO all those mobs. It makes it a little bit easier for farming and makes it much faster. But anyways, talking about the final boss, which is against Boa, she does a, a vast array of differing effects. So she clears all your buffs. She randomizes your orbs. She has a delay. Delay immunity for 98 turns, she paralyzes your crew for 4 turns, and 3 random characters are special binded, and you get 7 turns of blindness, so just lots of really annoying effects. Luckily for us here, our big mom is not special binded, if she was, we could go ahead and use Hyozo to unbind those characters, but this is what I'm suggesting to you guys here, to just basically take down Boa in the mid map, very easy to encounter, use the big mom special. And, and that's it. <laughs> like, it's that simple. Just use Big Mom's special ability in the mid-map, and you can always KO Boa. Very, very easy to deal with if you don't have the full V2 Mihawk Slasher Batch. So now that we've taken down Boa Hancock, we can have a look at this map here, and it doesn't look like we're going to counter any of these bosses here, because I want to always go for the stamina refill so I can conserve as many gems as possible. It's a pretty good strategy that I would suggest to you guys as well. I would suggest, if you can, always go for the stamina refill. It helps out so much. I've gotten so so many this treasure map so far and you can see i'm already at uh, overflow stamina right now just continuously landing on those stam refills is really really useful but anyways that's not what you guys are here for you guys are here to see what the treasure map bosses in my teams are so we're gonna go ahead and skip towards the battle rush where we're gonna take on kuma so we've made it to the battle rush and here is kuma right here the team that i am using against him is a powerhouse team utilizing sanji and judge as the captain uh, this is a pretty good team haven't really found too many issues with it so far the only thing is is i am running a character on this team that is a, a really really low boosted which is smoothie and oven I would suggest to run Smoothie and Oven for this fight. It makes it much, much easier to beat because of the really annoying effects on the final boss fight, which we will talk about once we get there. All right, so final fight against Kuma. We're finally here. So his preemptive attack will give him all poison immunity. So regular poison, strong poison, toxic, He's resistant to all of that, and he also has three turns of resilience. This is where Smoothie and Oven is clutch. Uh, also, do not activate any special ability that manipulates your orbs, because he will make type orbs negative for six turns, and he gives you blind as well. But we're going to go ahead and use Katakuri here just to give us more matching orbs, which is fine. Uh, then we can go ahead and use Smoothie and Oven Switch Effect, which does end of turn damage, which allows us to bypass the resilience that, that Kuma has. Uh, we can actually go ahead and use the uh, special ability of Sanji and Judge as well to get 
get an attack and an orb boost and at this stage uh it's it's game over like <laughs> just uh, literally a one tap and it's done uh literally the the switch effect of smoothing oven is so clutch uh, if you have Smoothie and Oven, which you should by this point, uh, definitely use them on the team to make it a lot easier for yourself. But that's definitely not the only way you can beat this. You could definitely go ahead and use uh, a character that actually removes resilience, such as Raid Bartolomeo, which is a pretty good choice as well. It's just the fact that uh, Raid Barto has a really high cooldown because only Raid Barto Stage 2 Special removes resilience, not his Stage 1. So that's something to take into consideration. But now the uh, second last boss is going to be against me. Hawk. Now, this is a little bit different from the team suggestion that I made in that team video yesterday. Uh, I am using a, a, a Dex Sabo team, if I could spit it out. Uh, Dex Sabo is really great because he just beats it very, very quickly. He has such a high attack multiplier that you can just blast through all these mobs very quickly. I'm also using Legend Brook as a sub here as well. Um, and the reason for that is, is because he has a damage reducing effect. And if we have the cooldown buff, we could actually use his special earlier on to just kill off mobs mob stages, but that's not really uh, the main reason why we bring him. It's just nice to have a unit that we could potentially use as a damage reducer on the final boss stage, or we can use him to kill off mobs. Now, because we have such high HP, uh, dealing with the death hit from Mihawk isn't really a problem, but we'll talk more about that once we reach that final boss stage. Okay, final boss stage against uh, Mihawk. Now, Mihawk actually has a barrier as well. This time, it is a good barrier. You have to hit at least one good before you break his barrier. He also has an immunity for 98 turns, and also for 9 turns, our chain multiplier is also reduced. This is where utilizing a character such as uh, Dex Sabo, or you could use V2 Fujitora as the captain to give you a chain lock. Chain lock is going to be your best friend for this fight in particular, and also because a lot of these characters have barriers, penetration it definitely makes it easier but when you kill off Mihawk he will revive he revives and he does int death damage to your team this is where you could use Colosseum Brook to block that death damage or you could use another damage reducer such as Legend Brook if you really need to to also block a majority of that damage but very very simple he doesn't really do that much damage I am on nav level 13 as I said earlier so the death damage isn't that significant but later on down the road that could become a problem which i could use legend brook to block a majority of that damage so now let's actually start talking about the final boss fight which is going to be against edward weevil edward weevil is kind of a pain in the butt but uh yeah the team i am using is obviously a pretty pay to win team with marco as the captain of course um he just helps out a lot the fact that he has a special ability that can get around basically all of the debuffs that get inflicted uh, on the final boss fight. So once we get to stage six of this boss fight, where the first mini boss appears, we'll talk about it. So stage five is upon us right now. Or stage six, my bad, is now upon us. Edward Weevil has a preemptive attack on stage six, where he gives you uh, four turns of attack down. Uh, also, I, I think it's ideal not to get him. I think it's below 50%. I think it's below 50%. I think he blows away characters. Don't quote me on that. Actually, I can pull it up right here. I actually completely forgot what he does in stage 6. So stage 6, yeah, below 50%. He blows away two of your characters. So definitely don't get him below 50. Uh, we're going to use Kizaru here. I actually haven't seen his special animation. Uh, Kizaru is great because he removes attack down. But uh, once you actually get a copy of Edward Weevil, you can actually use him on your team as well because he will actually remove 20 turns of attack down. So if you have Edward Weevil, you definitely use him on your team if you have him. Uh, I'm going to use another Marco special here as well. Marco is great because he gives us an attack boost and also for three turns he gets the buff captain ability which is a uh, pretty good reasoning to use his special ability here. Um, but like other than the attack down there's nothing really too crazy that you have to deal with on stage six. But stage seven is where things get kind of crazy and there's lots of things you have to take into account. So final boss fight stage seven against Edward Weevil. Preemptive attack will go ahead and uh, despair you for six turns. He also applies 98 turns of immunity, so you can't delay him, reduce his defense, or poison him. He has four turns of damage threshold as well. Um, so that's the main thing you have to worry about. Uh, and also the barrier that he has. Now, the barrier that he has 
can be three different variations. There's an orb barrier, there's a combo hit barrier, I think it's 25 hit combo, and I don't remember what the other one was. But definitely having a unit that can remove his barrier is going to be great. So I'm going to use AO here, which can uh, definitely change our orbs that they get given to us as well. You can see we get given G, Tandem, and Bomb orbs. So he changes them into colored orbs. We can then use Marco to change those colored orbs into matching. He also removes the despair. He also removes the threshold. But this is where I'd suggest to you guys definitely use a friend captain Marco for this. It will help you out so goddamn much. Having that effect to give you a type boost or change your orbs to matching as well as the threshold and despair removal. He does four major things. Definitely use friend captain Marcos here. Uh, if you don't have your own Marco, you there are lots of other characters that you could use. You could definitely use the legend Whitebeard and Marco, who's really great here. He doesn't react to any health cuts. So uh, Whitebeard and Marco are going to be great. Just cutting away 30% of his health is fantastic. Um, you could definitely use Colosseum Katakuri or Fol uh, Colosseum or Colosseum Smoothie. Both of those characters are great as they boost Marco and they'll also boost AO. Uh, Kizaru is a free spirit shooter, so boosting him on those teams will be a little bit more annoying. Um, and then you want to bring some characters that can remove Threshold if you don't have Friend Captain Marco. Characters like Colosseum Kuma, definitely the Strength Moria that just came out with the support ores on him. Uh, when you use the special, you'll remove two turns of Threshold, which is not too bad. Uh, but then on top of that, you also want a unit that can remove Despair as well. There's just, there's lots of different things in this fight that are just ridiculously annoying. So that's why I would suggest if you definitely can, get Friend Captain Marco. As they're going to help you out so much for this fight. But anyways, after we've activated all of our specials, we can go ahead and attack, and boom, that's it. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Shake the room. There we go. Edward Weevil is now defeated. So that is pretty much it. That's the full rundown of my teams that I've been using for the treasure map. Hopefully you guys learned something along the way about these fights in particular and some characters that you could think about using for these boss fights. And hopefully you guys get to grinding and at least get to that 1 million point threshold to max out Edward Weevil, who is going to be an exceptional character for the upcoming new game mode on One Piece Treasure Cruise Global, being the Kizuna Raid. So I would highly suggest to max him out for that reasoning specifically, but he is just a great character all around even outside of the Kizuna fantastic unit that can give your crew a universal two times attack boost and removing 20 turns of attack down as well as giving you tap timing bonus damage to himself so overall pretty awesome treasure map character hopefully you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the treasure map bosses and if you guys did make sure to leave a like and if you want to stay up to date with all the content i post including more one piece treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below but other than that guys i'll see you guys within the next video